This video is going to show you the relationship between energy and temperature using the kinetic molecular theory. So to begin with, I've got a single particle, simple situation, in a box. It, gravity is not affecting it, no electrical charges are affecting it, and it's just one particle. It's making perfectly elastic collisions with the, the, the walls of the box. And the box's dimensions are length by length by length, so it's a cube. So you can see, so you can see as it moves back and forth, you can look at the momentum and how the momentum switches from positive to negative when it bounces a wall and negative to positive when it hits the other wall. All right, so let's take a look at our molecule. We note the average force is equal to the change in momentum divided by the change in time every time it hits the wall. So when it hits the wall, the change in momentum is actually twice the momentum. That's 2mv. And it's twice because it's changing direction. On a number line, you can think of it as going from 10 to negative 10. That's a change of 20. So that's what's going on here. That's why it's twice just 10, or 2mv. All right, so if this is true, then I know the average force is equal to twice the momentum divided by time. and Velocity, I'm going to look at a way to calculate velocity with my box, is equal to distance over the change in time. So what that means is that the change in time is just the distance divided by the velocity. Keeping along this, this track of motion, or thought, you can see how the length is varies. So it's length to go across, and then the same length to go back. So twice the length. So in one collision, time for it takes to return back to the original point, it takes 2L over V. That's twice the length of the box. All right, so now the force is equal to twice the momentum, 2MV, divided by the time, which we're replacing the time with 2L divided by V. Do a little bit of algebra, and I get 2MV times V divided by 2L. Now when I combine some like terms, I've got MV2 over L. Now that looks kind of familiar. So let me make a little more room. and Think about this. The pressure is a molecule's force. All of it. The pressure is the force of every molecule that gets added as it hits the wall. So I've got one molecule in this case. So one molecule means the pressure is just going to be the average force over the area of that molecule hitting the wall. That means that it's going to be force over length squared because remember the area of the box is L by L, so it's L squared. Now with this in mind, I'm going to take a look at this and substitute in for force, and I'm going to substitute in mv squared over L. So when I look at this, I've now got mv squared over L cubed because it was L squared times L, so that's L cubed in the denominator. So I have, if I have n number of molecules, then the pressure I feel is equal to the number of molecules times mv squared over L cubed. Now the thing about this is I've got a box in three dimensions, but my diagram only has the ball moving back in one direction. So at any given time, it's only moving in one direction, not three directions. So really when I think about it, it's going to be one-third the number of molecules is equal to mv squared over L cubed. And that one-third comes from the fact of it's only going in one direction. I'm not doing all three directions for the motion. Okay, so now let's kind of continue with this thread. L cubed, well, that's a, vo a length times a length times a length. That's a volume. So that becomes one-third n mv squared over volume. But when I look at that mv squared, that looks a lot like kinetic energy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of that fraction by 2. So now it becomes 2 times 1 third n times 1 half mv squared over v. Again, I'm just multiplying top and bottom of that fraction by half, and I'm kind of moving it around. And what I see is this 1 half mv squared. That's kinetic energy. So the, so the pressure is equal to 2vn times the kinetic energy divided by the volume. All right, hang in there. So PV is equal to 2 thirds N times the kinetic energy. So 2 thirds the number of molecules times their kinetic energy is equal to NRT. That was the ideal gas law. Remember PV equals NRT. And NR, well that's just equal to, so it goes from the number of moles times the ideal gas constant is equal to the number of molecules times KB. And KB is something called Boltzmann's constant. So in this case, I'm going to replace my NR with capital N and a KB, capital N being the number of molecules. And when I rearrange my formula, that means that the kinetic energy is equal to 3 halves of KBT per molecule. If I have N number of molecules, it would just be N times 3 halves KBT. And that KE, that's the average kinetic energy. So if I look at this, combine it with some things I know about the ideal gas law, then what I'm going to have is this new energy, the internal energy of a gas and it's going to be called N. So instead of calling it kinetic energy, now I'm going to call it capital U as the internal energy. So I'm switching names here. And capital U is that internal energy. It's going to be capital N, 3 halves, KVT for a gas, or capital, 
uh, it can also be three halves NRT for a gas. And NRT is nice because it relates to the ideal gas law. So what I know is that the internal energy, that's capital U, is equal to N three halves KVT, and the internal energy is equal to N three halves, I'm sorry, three halves NRT. The key thing about this expression is that the internal energy is proportional to the temperature. So temperature measures the average connection of the molecules, which we're calling the internal energy of a gas. So the internal energy is proportional to T. If T doubles, so does U.